Good level design is important. It's very important, in fact. Without an interesting space to play the game in, you're just sitting in a gray box shooting the walls. Team Fortress 2 has a lot of really great maps that are more than just a gray box. They're more of an orange box. Sorry. Believe it or not, though, maps don't simply just into existence. They have to be built, and not just built, designed. There's a fine balance a map has to teeter on in order to be good in a game like this, and while some get it right, others get it very, very, very wrong. For some people, trying to build a map that gets this balance right is a hobby of theirs, and it's been through this dedicated community of map makers that we've gotten some of the coolest maps out there. Yours truly has been casually building maps for this game for some odd years, and while I might not be the best, as someone who has spent hundreds of hours in Halo's Forge mode, I thoroughly enjoy the hobby. But mapping's not for everybody, nor is it particularly easy. So if you feel like it's not your cup of nuts, that's fine. If anything, this is an opportunity to gain a bit of insight on the map design process. But in the spirit of sharing a hobby of mine with you, I hope that for those of you who would enjoy it, this video, and the soon to be released part two, can give you a head start on creating new worlds for us to play in. Maps are built in a program called Hammer World Editor. This is basically what a majority of Valve games are built in. It's old, it's clunky, and it's got that gorgeous off-white, sharp-cornered aesthetic of the mid-90s, but none of that really matters because it at least works. Well, kinda. Not gonna sugarcoat it, it crashes. A lot. And sometimes it just won't work because of one tiny little detail. But as long as you save often and don't go overboard with, well, anything, you'll be fine. Luckily, you won't have to find this program anywhere on the internet to download, because this program lives on Steam. In fact, if you've ever played any Source game ever, you already have it. You'll find the proper one for TF2 in this folder here. And I would highly recommend creating a shortcut, because navigating through Steam files is a total pain in the artichoke. Just boot up the program, click Team Fortress 2, and that's it. You're now in Hammer World Editor. Oh boy. So now you have Hammer open and you're staring at a blank canvas wall-eyed. Sweet! Now the next step is actually learning how to use this mess. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to do that here, otherwise I'll be here all day, but I will recommend you to the person that teaches most recent mappers everything they need to know, UEAK Crash. Pull up his map building playlist and just Netflix binge all of it. If you follow along with each video, I can guarantee you'll get most everything you'll need to know by the end of it. Y yeah I know, it's gonna take some time, and it'll be slightly confusing at first, but Crash knows what he's doing, and does a fantastic job of explaining most of the finer points, so you're in good hands. Finishing the series is the first and most important step to building your first map, and it's how I and countless other mappers learned in the first place. It is all you need to be able to jump into your very first project. Unfortunately, there are some parts of the development that he hasn't quite gotten a chance to cover yet, so there may be a handful of subjects you'll have to find help on elsewhere, but UEAK Crash covers all the important details. Anything he doesn't reach, however, Top Hat Waffle has tutorials for almost anything you could ever want to learn in Hammer. And although he doesn't do much in the way of Team Fortress 2, his technical know-how is pretty thorough. Others have also recommended the Valve Developer Wiki, which is a dense read, and not all the information is really that easy to find, but it's a master's course in level design and is, for a lot of people, the map builder's bible. Because believe it or not, at one point, Valve was the best at this sort of thing. It's also impossible to talk about making maps for TF2 without mentioning the primary resource for all mappers in this game, TF2Maps.net. This forum is where you'll find anything you could ever need, from tutorials to special models to playtesting and even seeing what other people are working on. I would highly recommend signing up and joining their Discord. They also have a huge collection of other resources on map design, theory, and practice. And just reading through some of the tutorials that they have gathered will help you tremendously in your first few projects. Interlopers.net is also pretty fantastic. There's one tool especially that will check compile logs of your project and will automatically flag out anything that might be causing an error. So if there's anything going wrong on your map, this is the go-to place to figure out what. And I'll make sure I post the links for all these things I'm mentioning in the description below so you don't miss anything. Uh, let's get to it. Now the first thing I'd recommend you do is grab a piece of graphing paper and a pencil. Sketching out how you want your map to look saves you a lot of time, and while some mappers fly by the vertex of their brushes, for beginners it's best to have at least a vague idea of where you're going before you put mouse to pavement. Now if you're just starting off, I would just make your version of an already existing map. Take something simple, like your favorite King of the Hill map and put your own spin on it. Or take a map that you have a problem with and try to fix that problem. 
Maybe take something you like from one map and put it in yours to spice things up. The idea here is to keep things simple to help you learn, because I know there's a very real temptation to try and come up with something completely original right off the bat. But as much as everyone wants to break the rules, you kinda have to know them first. Building a simple King of the Hill map or a Capture the Flag map that's already modeled after someone else's work helps you understand why something does, or more importantly, does not work. And it also means that there's a pretty good chance that you'll avoid a lot of common gameplay pitfalls. Everyone wants their map to be the next pattern on the cat's pajamas, but the truth is that's not really going to happen when you're first learning. So if you're worried about copying an already existing map or being unoriginal, don't sweat it. Just pick a map you like and take the parts you like and arrange them in your own way. Learn what they do for every class and for the overall gameplay, because the sooner you learn that, the sooner you can make something really cool. I would also like to stress the importance of doodling in Hammer. You don't have to build a map every time you open the program. Maybe you want to build a weird looking house. Maybe you want to build a giant cannon. Maybe you just want to build a huge uh, ice cream cone. It helps a lot to doodle, and it gives you an excuse to just play with the software and learn what it's good at. So the first thing to do is build your layout. This is where having an already sketched out comes in handy, because when you're building, there's a pretty big temptation to get hit by a little thing called analysis paralysis. God knows I've been a victim of it way too many times. Oh God, if I move this here, that opens that sight line, but if I put this here, the devil can camp here, and if I do this, the heavy can- No, no, just fucking build the map. You'll fix it later. Don't worry about it. It's all good. If you stick to your sketch and only fix minor things here and there, you'll have it chunked out in no time. That's the biggest step. After the layout is built comes the skybox, which doesn't have to be fancy in this version of the map. It just has to seal it. Sealing a map is what makes it run right. The inside gameplay space needs to be separated from this big, black, expansive void of hammer. In the beginning, if you're just compiling, you can do the big old diaper skybox, but once you've developed it a little bit more, you'll need to make this as concise as possible. And I cannot stress enough to make sure your map is sealed when you do this. If anything looks goofy, if anything looks off and out of whack, it's the first thing you should check. This kinda goes underneath the same umbrella as optimization, which at this stage is as easy as applying the no draw texture to anything the players can't see. No need to waste computing power to render something no one's gonna look at, right? Once the skybox is <laughs> wrapped up, comes the game elements. This means spawn buildings, clipping, and that thing that nobody plays. These are what differentiate a map that can be loaded versus one that can be actually played, and are arguably the most important parts. Health kits should be put in proper places, arrows should be pointing to the objective, and resupply lockers should be ready to go. Once you're 100% sure everything's in working order, your next step is to post it on the map factory. On TF2Maps.net, this is where all in-development maps get posted and where you can not only share feedback with other people's projects, but also get feedback on your own. Some of you may be tempted to post it to the Steam Workshop, but the Steam Workshop is much better for finished products rather than in-development ones. Before you post anywhere though, be sure you run down the checklist here so that it has everything it needs for the next step, which is the most fun. Playtesting is a blast, and it's all done through TF2Maps.net's improvised playtesting sessions, commonly referred to as IMPs, that are hosted roughly four to five times a week depending on how many maps there are to play. If you want to be pinged whenever they begin a session, join their Steam group to get the notification and the link to join. I would recommend to anybody to play in these improvised testing sessions because they are so much fun to play some of these in-development maps. They're so broken and so much fun. Once your map is posted on the map factory, go to the Discord and sign your project up for playtesting. In bot commands, type exclamation mark, add your map name, and then the link to your map. Once it's there, your map will automatically be put in the queue to be playtested. After it's queued up and ready to roll, it's time for the real excitement, actually playing your map. It's one of the most rewarding experiences out there. To see scouts jumping on rocks to be put there for that exact purpose, to see a sniper enjoy a broken sightline you hadn't even considered that you put there, to see your players be totally confused on where all the health kits are, ugh, it's a crazy rush, and it feels great. Playing your map is the best way to figure out what needs to change. Play as many classes as you can, notice where you want to go as that class in relation to the objective, and what do you wish was there to help that specific class work better. A lot of mapping for this game is based on intuition and gut feelings, which is why it helps to play it yourself and take note of the thoughts you have. Sometimes, though, life happens and people have to go you know, work, eat, sleep, go to school, whatever. So if you aren't around when they do get around to testing your map, never fear. 
For the miracle workers over there at tf2maps.net have got you covered. They record and host all of the demos to view once it's played, so you can watch everyone play it yourself at any time you want. Plus, to their specialized plugin, you can see the coordinates of all specific feedback given for your project, which is great for fixing very specific issues. Sadly, I have to admit, getting proper feedback is not going to be totally pleasant. Uh, criticism is never fun to take, and it's pretty easy to get really discouraged by it. But the good news is, the people at TF2 Maps are incredibly friendly, and anything they say about your map they say with the sole intention of helping you improve. And if you ever ask for anyone for help, they will happily lend a hand. So even if you don't have a project to test, I would highly recommend playing on their server and help play test as much as you can. Not only is it all kinds of fun to play these experimental in development and slightly broken maps, but it's also good to see what sort of work other people are doing and notice the patterns in how they build their projects. You don't even necessarily have to give any sort of feedback either. Just by playing the map you're helping out and having as many people as possible play the project is invaluable to a mapper. Something to keep in mind though, map making takes time and practice, and unfortunate as it is, one thing is guaranteed to be true, your first map is going to suck. And so will your second, and most likely your third. It's going to be a bit before you learn what makes a great map, but regardless of where you start from, if you keep at it, it's only going to be a matter of time before you come up with something awesome. Everyone wants to hit it out of the park on their first try, and thinks that they can get it right on their first shot, but the truth is, this, like any other skill, takes time and patience to get good at. But it's alright, because everybody has the capacity for greatness, and that same time and patience is all it takes. If it makes you feel any better, a while back a thread was posted at TF2 Maps calling for screenshots of everyone's first project, and guess what? They're all terrible! So don't worry about making something great right away. We, we all have to start somewhere. And the key to making something great is just not giving up. Ugh, God, that's cheesy. So, while I was making this video, I decided to build a map along with it to make sure I'm covering as much as I need to. Suffice to say, there is nowhere near enough time in this video for me to say all I want to, which is why part two to this will be me documenting my progress of building my little project called King of the Hill Death Bagel. It's a working title, cut me a break. I'll also include a lot of the other tips and tricks I picked up along the way that could help you in your projects too. And if any of you watching this do decide to go get into map making, please do not hesitate to tag me in a picture on Twitter or in my Steam group. I would love to see some fresh faces on the mapping scene. Let's get building, guys! I'm the invincible, undefeated champion. Mount Zion's my ancestors can't rely on. Star of David, nah, the thought of Sodom. Modern dumb and done crumbs left to the dumb thumb. To this play button, glutton of words, mutt 